Hi folks, clear path, fully integrated servo motors. I am so excited we found these things. This video is our intro to clear path. We're gonna show you how you can get started with one of these. There's some awesome, really easy to work with uh, Arduino code. We'll go through that, the libraries. And then today, let's take a look at accuracy and how fast they are, which are both awesome things about them, folks. Welcome to another Wednesday widget. So we're really excited about these clear paths. We've got some projects that we've had kind of on hold for a while because I just wasn't crazy about using basic steppers for them. And don't get me wrong, we love steppers. Uh, they've been some of our most popular videos and they're great and they're really cheap. But there's some major drawbacks on functionality, which we'll talk about that at the end of the video. If you are interested though in seeing more of what we do on ClearPass, please click the subscribe button. We, we've got, I'm, I'm really excited about what's to come. So. One of the crazy things I almost didn't believe it at first is clear paths have an auto homing routine that will home against a hard stop. So you don't need a separate homing switch. So I didn't believe this and I've heard it's great. So let's grab our uh, Mitsu Toyo dial test indicator and let's see how repeatable it really is. So we've got a Mitsu Toyo dial indicator set up here. Each one of the tick marks is half a thousandth of an inch. So it'll take about eight ticks to equal the thickness of a human hair or a sheet of printer paper. Pretty darn precise. So we can preload it. We've got a NOGA indicator here. These things are great. We can come in and these are really sensitive, but turn this knob and push against the tip here and get it to zero. And we may even be able to use the fine adjust in the base. Cool. Isn't that amazing? So here's what's happening. When we turn the, and we'll go over the Arduino code at the end, but when the, uh, when the clear path is enabled, it automatically is set to home. And so what it's doing is there's a rubber stop right back here and it's moving the platter backwards and it's measuring something. I believe it's torque. I don't want to misspeak though. And that's why I said to the guy, I said, is that really that accurate? And, and he said yes, but the proof is in the pudding. So there were about half a thou, or excuse me, a quarter of a thou off, but I bet you sometimes you gotta do it once or twice just to let the indicator settle in. Let's just take a couple of measurements here and see. And I'll readily admit, this is kind of a perfect scenario. Uh, is this gonna be different when it's on a dirty, dusty plasma machine or it's got a lot more weight? We'll see, we'll test it. But well, from what I've heard, these hard stop homing switches are pretty darn awesome. And you know how amazing that is? Oh my gosh, I love it. All right, let's take a look at the speed side here. So I just loaded some code. We'll take a look at it in a second. And this, this is, I believe, full speed, at least for this version of the clear path. This is awesome. So the beauty of photo uh, or filming here is we can use the timestamp from the camera to figure out how fast we actually went. Let's go take, a, go take a look at the code though, show how easy it is to do this and look at what the implied speed should be. A couple of things to note is that we are setting the max velocity and the max acceleration here, which is what's driving the speed that I'm trying to get to show this off. This may look like a lot of code, but really all it's doing is saying X move total distance. Total distance, by the way, is just 75,000. And I'll come back to what that is. And then it delays 20 milliseconds. That's 1 50th of a second. And then X move negative total distance, which is to go back home. And it follows that at the acceleration and velocity settings we put in above. It's just that easy. So what's the 75,000? In my opinion, quickly gets, I wouldn't say complicated, but it's easy to get lost. 75,000 is the distance in steps. And see this line right here? There's some pretty awesome software called MSP, which is free from Technic that you use to tune the uh, clear path when you get it and it addresses how much weight is on it and it lets you do some really otherwise complicated and tricky stuff. I don't have it connected right now, so it doesn't make sense. More to come though. But one of the things we had set there is 1600 steps per revolution of the motor. So if we're going 75,000 steps, in 1600 steps per rev, 
some pretty simple math. 1,600 steps per rev, we just mentioned that, and the 75,000 is the total amount of steps that we're traveling. That means 75,000 steps divided by 1,600 per revolution means we're traveling 46.87 revolutions, and it's a 10 millimeter pitched lead screw in that beautiful Bell Everman linear stage, which equates to 18.454 inches. I believe, and I need to check on this, that we can get up to about 3,500 RPMs as it's currently configured. Now there's some acceleration there that happens, so it won't be at 3,500 RPMs the whole time. But that means uh, you're going 58 revolutions per second. At 58 revolutions per second, that means it would take about 0.8 seconds to travel the 46 and change revolutions that we needed to cover 18 0.45 inches. So let's set up a really simple uh, formula here to convert this into something more meaningful. Cross divide makes it easy. So I want to know how far I would go in one full second. So equals this times this divided by that. So I'm doing the 18.45 times 1 divided by 0.8. That means in one second I should be able to go 22.96 inches. So that's inches per second, which means times 60 IPM, 1,377 inches per minute. I don't know what we ended up with in the actual while we're filming this, but I will know when we're editing right here. So let's see just exactly what that looked like. Pretty awesome though. We've got a dial indicator set up. It should be zeroed at the end of the travel. Let's combine speed and precision. When we go as fast as we can, whatever it ended up being, 1,000, 1,200 inches a minute, do we get any sort of slop or run out at the end? I'm really hopeful that this is gonna show, there's a lot of behind the scenes stuff that goes on with these things. It's pretty darn amazing that the engineers at Technic and ClearPath were explaining to us about how they're just, I don't wanna say bulletproof, but boy, they are impressive, damn impressive. So it homed right there, it only has to do that once. We're zeroed. You get it zeroed here. Okay. Now we're zeroed. Watch that, folks. Isn't that just awesome? I mean, it's just on. It's not like a little above, a little below. It's just dead nuts. And that's crazy. This shaft is rotating at something like 3,500 RPMs at the max uh, RPM range along here as it moves this ball nut along these linear rails. Oh my, folks, amazing, just amazing. Here is the exact clear path that you saw in the video today, and it is $324. A slightly different version is $257, definitely not quite as fast and, and, and zippy on the acceleration and performance and so forth, but pretty darn close. So that's basically what you need to consider the introductory price. You also need a power supply. They make one here, again, all these links are in the video description for basically the uncovered one for 200 bucks. You could provide your own 75 volt DC power supply. There are definitely cheaper ones out there. This one I understand will provide power for up to four uh, clear paths. So it's not $200 per you know motor or axis anyways. Take a look at the code. It's pretty well commented, but we define a clear path, uh, initialize this. This is all stuff I would copy and paste. We're traveling 75,000 steps, which is again, very important to correlate to what you're trying to do. And we do some setup stuff in Arduino where we attach the clear path, set the max velocity um, and acceleration. The enable is what sort of homes it. Uh, and that's really it. A lot of the rest of this noise in the code is stuff that's more useful for debugging like serial uh, outputs about what's going on behind the scenes. So again, this is something where I would use as a starting point because you don't need to retype all of this. X, which is nothing to do with the X axis, but rather the fact that we defined a clear path as X. Move to, move total distance. Again, don't be great. Total distance here, it's just a variable. It just says move 75,000 steps and wait and then give some serial stuff. 
I'll explain more what this is, but this is the high level feedback information coming back from the clear path, which is a really cool thing that can tell us if something's sort of not right or if it's not done with its move. And then once we're done with that, we go back home. So that's just it. When we build, we're gonna build a CNC system with this thing, probably for our DIY plasma, that will most likely not be Arduino based, but rather some sort of a controller, perhaps Linux CNC. So that won't use Arduino code. We do have some Arduino specific projects and it's gonna be really cool to see. Again, I wanna emphasize just how easy it is. The other thing that I really like is I've gotten to know some of the guys at ClearPath uh, and Technic already, and they're, what's great about them is they're very honest about, look, if you want a system that's a $20 stepper motor, uh, that's great. Those might be fine for some things, and, and we're not a good fit for you. Their MSP software that's free, that has a built-in oscilloscope, very powerful, very cool. And then I like the fact that with these ClearPaths, you know, you're not going to burn them up. They uh, are very smart and intelligent. It's going to save me a lot of the headaches that we've had in dealing with some of our DIY stepper systems. So hope you guys enjoyed. Take care. More to come on this. See you next Wednesday.